about to leave Already packing, come with me I'm not really asking, we'll get away To a place where we don't know About to see the world in action What we can be, life with no distractions We'll get away, this is what we waited for Good afternoon, everyone. Welcome to this 26th live A-level economics revision blast. Can you believe it's number 26? We've got Penny in the middle and uh, Lisa on the right there. Two people you will be uh, very familiar with uh, if you have attended quite a few of our fantastic live revision sessions. So welcome to Penny and Lisa for this session on globalization. So that should be a, a cracking a cracking 30 minutes or so if you're joining us live Welcome. Uh, you're under a bit of time pressure today as we go through a variety of activities. If you're watching on replay or catch up, you've got the option to uh, give yourself a bit more time by pressing pause on the video to work out what you think the responses might be before restarting the video to see how you got on. Uh, looks like lots and lots of people joining us in the chat window. We won't be able to shout out everyone's name today, um, but uh, we'll do. We'll try to maybe pick out some names of those who've answered first in the chat, in the live chat. Uh, so. Uh, Penny and Lisa, who wants to give me a quick flavour for what we're going to do and then we'll, we'll crack on because we've got lots to do, haven't we? Well, I'd say globalisation is a big dog topic. It crosses yeah. every single exam board and you really need to know your stuff. So we've got some theory, but we've got some fantastic examples which are incredibly useful for dropping into your work. Love it. Well, you can't beat a big dog topic. So let's do it. <laughs> let's, let's do it, shall we? Let's, uh, here we go. OK, so we're starting off with some multiple choice questions and we're starting on that big dog topic by wondering what the characteristics of globalisation include. So you've got four options here. There's a sort of mix of different factors in each of those different options, A, B, C and D. Have a careful look through them and think about which of those you think is giving the correct answer for the characteristics of globalisation. 
Okay, so you've got an, a number of things are repeated in some of the different options there, and some of them have topics which or, or factors which just appear once. So you've got to have a good, careful read through them and find the correct mix. So a number of people are coming up with answers already. I can see Deep is, I hope I said that correctly, is the first one who's had a go there. So some more answers coming in now. Anybody else want to have a go before we reveal the correct answer? OK, Jim, can we have a look at the correct answer, please? And it is D. So well done to those of you who put that up. It is your, your answer. So the characteristics of globalization include labor migration and global brands and the existence of multinational corporations. And some of those, as I said, showed up in A, B and C as well, didn't they? But then we've got some other things there that were sort of thrown in there to try and distract you. Embargoes, no, that would be an issue with, with protectionism in, uh, in answer A. And then in B, transfers of capital and non-tariff barriers those might be more to do with things like balance of payments and protectionism uh, and c none of those look appropriate for ca characteristics of globalization so d was the answer to go for there well done okay on to the next one please and globalization now we've looked at the characteristics of it how do you best describe it what's the best definition there the best definition amongst those that are offered So again, have a good look through, see which one you like the look of best. And let's start saying, OK, Deep is working fast today. I can see the same person coming up with the first answer again. Well done. Let's see who else wants to have a go as well. If anybody else is going for the same answer as you or maybe opting for a different one. OK, Deep is gone for answer B. Let's see if that's correct again, Jim, please. And it is. Yes, that word interdependence, making the world economy more interdependent. That's an important word when you're describing the con concept of globalisation. Uh, some of the others there could be relevant as well. So A, reducing the differences in tax systems that could contribute. Um, D, creating larger trading blocks. Well, there's maybe some relation between that and globalization, but it's not really what we're looking for. Um, and of course, driving the need for greater protectionism would give you the opposite, really. OK, so let's have a look at question three. Moving on, now we're looking at what's happened to globalization and to trade over the last 30 years or so. So you've got some data there between 1990 and 2008. Global trade rose from 39% of world GDP to 61% of world GDP, massive increase. What are the main drivers that drove that increase? Is it A, B, C, or D? And again, you've got a mix of factors there and you need to make your choice from amongst the mix. Okay, let's have some answers. I can see some answers starting to come in already. So Deep, again, has been first there. Come on, the rest of you, you're going to have to see if you can beat this person and get your answer in first. Who else would like to have a go at this one as well? Okay, let's see if we can have the correct answer, please. Uh, Jim, has Deep got it right again? Yes, three out of three. Well done. So A, containerization the opening up of global financial markets and freer trade are all drivers of globalization. They've, they've been contributors to that massive, fast rise in global trade. OK, um, and the last of these, uh, that was the last of our, uh, start again, sorry, we have now got on the screen the last of our four multiple choice questions. So now we're coming back up to date. Uh, in September 2019, the World Bank chief, Penelope Gugiana Goldberg, issued a plea to help losers of globalisation. A major disadvantage of globalisation could be which of those four? Who are the losers here, the losers of globalisation? So is it labor migration? Is it global brands? Is it to do with larger capital flows moving around international financial markets? Or is it greater inequality in the distribution of income? And guess what? We've got the same person again coming up with the, their answer first. Well done. See who else would like to join you and have a go. OK, some more answers coming in, looking at as if people are all agreeing on the same answer there. So let's see if they're right, Jim. 
And yes, they are. It's answer D, the greater inequality in the distribution of income is a major disadvantage of globalization. It could be that. OK. Um, so you could have been thinking about global brands, but maybe that could be a good thing. You know, it, it's certainly a feature or, or, or something that's come out of globalization, but that could turn out to be a good thing. The larger capital flows moving around international financial markets, that should actually be a good thing as well. Uh, Labour mi migration could happen and that could be a good thing or it could be a bad thing. It may cause a brain drain in the country that um, people are moving away from skilled workers um, but it could equally be a good thing so the, the the major disadvantage is likely to be the greater inequality in the distribution of income there well done okay so now we're moving on from multiple choice to a 60 second challenge and those of you who have followed a number of these uh, revision blast sessions will be very familiar with this activity so you're going to have 60 seconds to match key phrases to their definition I think this one is a little bit easier on some of you. If we can move on to it, you can have a look that there are only five that you're going to have to work with this time. Others, we've had 10. So you've got 60 seconds to match A, B, C and D with their correct definition on the right. One, two, three, four and five. Let's start the clock. <clears throat> There you go, time's up. And again, I can see that Deep has come up with the first answer, well done. And the correct answers are on the screen for you now. So containerization is number two, a system of freight transport to use in sea shipping that has reduced transport costs. Deglobalization may be an emerging trend, it's the process of diminishing interdependence, that word interdependence again, and integration between economies. Uh, multinational companies, that's a firm which has facilities and other assets other assets in at least one country other than its own home country. Uh, the open economy with a low tariff and non-tariff barriers, which is deeply integrated into the regional and global economy. And then on the other hand, the closed economy, number four, an economy operating without imports and exports. So it's closed to global trade. So well done if you managed to get all five of those correct in that 60 seconds time. You know your definitions well. And now I'm going to hand you over to Lisa to see if you can crack the code. Thank you, Penny. OK, now we're moving on to thinking about getting some applied examples and checking that we have some idea about a country's place in the world. So this is asking you to rank these countries in order of their percentage share of world output. That's GDP. Remember, GDP is the total value of goods and services produced in this case in the world and PPP adjusted means we have adjusted the exchange rate so we can make comparisons. So let's have a go. Can you rank them? Have a go in the chat. In what order would you put these countries? Which country has the top share of GDP? Let's see if we can get the top three. What do we reckon? So we've got China here, India, the UK, Japan, the USA, and Germany. So have a go in the chat. See if you can decide in which order you are going to put these countries. And once again, Deep is on fire. He has got there straight away with the answer. Is anyone else going to challenge him and have a go? Uh, which countries you think are going to be um, the biggest? So we've got uh, China seems to be the view of uh, the, the country with the biggest share of GDP. Uh, let's have a look. Jim, can you tell us what the correct order is? That's tremendous. Very well done. 
what is quite remarkable here is that unsurprisingly china has just edged ahead of the usa and india of course close behind very populous countries uh, producing huge numbers of goods and services japan is in fourth place with 6.3 percent followed by germany followed by the uk what is quite amazing is that these countries are the dominant ones and the rest of the world accounts for under a quarter of global output the UK appearing to be punching above its weight in terms of its contribution to global output, despite the fact that we often appear to be uh, running a, a poor show in terms of exports. OK, Jim, let's move on to the next slide. Now, characteristics of globalisation, it's such a broad concept that we often use many different definitions and statements to explain what globalisation is. We've seen the word interdependence used, but there are other features as well. So which of these, can you put in the chat, which of these you think are features of globalization? Do you think it's greater use of outsourcing and offshoring of production? Is it the development of global brands? We're all very familiar with those. Is it an increase in equality within nations? Is it greater use of protectionist measures? How about higher levels of labour migration? You will have got some of these answers, I'm sure, from the previous questions. So what do you think might be features of globalisation? Are most of them features of globalisation or are some of them odd ones out? What do you reckon might be the case? Would you get increasing spending on capital investment, innovation and infrastructure? So we've got some answers coming in here. We're, a group, we're suggesting that C3 is going to be a response, the expansion of FDI. Uh, we're also looking at the greater source of uh, use of outsourcing and offshoring. That's coming in. Global brands. A lot of us think there's a huge range of these uh, options that are correct. So let's have a look, Jim, and see which are indeed the features of globalization. Absolutely. So we only had two that were not. Um, an increase in equality within nations. Well, actually, many people regard globalization as doing exactly the opposite. Um, it might be true that globalization reduces inequality between countries, but within them, many think that it makes it worse. Uh, Donald Trump, who thank, they'll all be seen the back of, but part of the reason for his success was that he wanted to bring production back to the USA. He recognised that some workers had lost their jobs as a result of globalisation. Other things we're very aware of in terms of globalisation, this use of outsourcing and offshoring. Offshoring is when you wholesale produce your good abroad. Uh, Dyson, who makes his... Um, Vacuum cleaners in Malaysia, alongside texting the Prime Minister, that's a sign of um, uh, offshoring and outsourcing. Apple, for example, they produce various components of their um, products in different countries. So that's when you are outsourcing or a specific task, not necessarily producing the whole product abroad. Um, we could also see a shift in the balance of economic and financial power from developed to emerging economies. One would certainly argue that the rise of Brazil, uh, Brazil less so now, but certainly India and China has been as a result of increasing globalization. So all of those features, very broad, could be included as part of globalization. Protectionism, of course, is precisely the opposite. So we know that these are the features of uh, globalization. So when you write an essay about globalization, you could use lots of different descriptors to say what it is. Uh, there's not one perfect, correct answer for it. And now we're going to move on to um, uh, the next uh, slide, which is back to Penny, who's going to be talking about on balance, which gives us a great opportunity to practice our evaluative skills. Absolutely. Thanks very much, Lisa. So, yes, exactly right. What we're looking at here is moving on further with your examination skills. Uh, and I expect that lots of you are practicing writing 
essays that involve analysis and evaluation at the moment for the assessments that you have coming up. So let's have a go at this question here. Can you please give one benefit of globalization? Type it into the chat when you've thought of one particular benefit of globalization. Think of what the economic benefits would be. Think what economic terminology you can use in describing that. So what parts of the economics course that you've covered might be a good description of one benefit of globalization? Okay, first answer through for here from Ashe. Well, well done. Greater consumer choice. Yes, that's a good one. Thank you. Okay, what else can we add to that? You could make quite a long list probably of the benefits. If you think back to the exercises that we've already done. They might give you some clues to some ideas. Chator is suggesting international trade leading to a variety of choices. Good, okay. Who would those choices be for? Who benefits from those choices? And then the next one coming through is increased international competitiveness. Okay, these are all good suggestions. Great, let's see if we can add another couple on there. Think about who is benefiting and how they're benefiting. Yeah, we've got a tutor to you coming in there. Thank you. With the technology transfer from developed to emerging economies. So maybe there's something there which is relevant to that other big, big dog topic of, of development, which appears again on the exam board specifications. OK, choices benefit all the economic agents. OK, fine. Thank you. So you can, you know, you could then go on and extend how each of them benefits from the, the choices that they've got available to them as a result of globalization. Let's have a look at a couple of suggestions here, Jim, that, that we've prepared earlier for you. So balancing in on the benefits side, a couple of suggestions here. And, and this first one, I think, uh, reflects what a lot of you were suggesting in the chat there, that competitive markets reduce the scale of monopoly profits and incentivize businesses to seek cost reducing innovations. You know, when you open up to globalization, then you're competing in a far bigger market and there will be far more competitors out there that you have to face up to. So that's going to, first of all, reduce the scale of monopoly profits and incentivize businesses to seek cost reducing innovations so that they can compete better in those wider, bigger markets. And that, going back to the points about benefiting economic agents, might benefit the firm, but certainly benefits the consumer as well. And maybe the government does well out of a tax income as well. OK, and then we've got encouraging producers and consumers to reap the benefits from a deeper division of labour and economies of scale. So this, of course, is, is quite a nice synoptic point that you could make, particularly if you're looking at uh, synoptic answers in some of the assessments, considering what some of the microeconomic terminology about division of labour and about economies of scale and how you might use that in describing the benefits of globalisation. OK, good work there. Thank you. Let's see now if you can come up with some uh, drawbacks. So now, please, could you give me one drawback, one disadvantage of globalisation? What's your balancing argument going to be? And again, if you think back through some of the exercises that we've already done, that might give you some ideas that you want to use here. OK, uh, Ashe is coming with an idea, which is uh, the first one that's come in. Thank you. Which is over dependence and over reliance. Now, who's depending and who's relying on what? What can, can you give a bit more context to your suggestion there, please? OK, we've got Deep coming in. He's been a bit quiet for a few minutes, so good to hear from you again. Increased inequality sometimes between and within countries. Yes, good, that absolutely. And rising wealth inequality there coming in is the next suggestion. Um, and that was certainly one of the uh, issues that was being talked about before, wasn't it, in the exercise you just did with Lisa. Any other suggestions that anyone would like to add here, I wonder?
Okay, yeah, the suggestions coming in are on all, all along the same sort of lines there. So that's great. Thank you. Let's have a look, Jim, please, at the two suggestions that we're going to put in here to balance up the scales here. So we've got two here, this bottom one. Let's look at the second one first, because that's the one that a number of people were commenting on about rising inequality and relative poverty, leading possibly to political and social tensions and instability as a backlash that could happen and, and has been seen to happen in, in some countries and globalization can contribute to that. Uh, the, the rising wealth and income inequality could be an issue that then causes lack of stability in an economy. And then the other one that we've got here for you is threats to the global commons. So again, that's slightly more synoptic idea because we're sort of drawing on the, the microeconomic ideas of market failure. So threats to the global commons such as, so nice to see an example, threats of irreversible damage to ecosystems, perhaps from overproduction, and Ashe was re referring to over-dependence and over-reliance. Perhaps we've got here is overproduction of some goods in order to uh, be able to service the larger global market. And what that might lead to is irreversible damage to some ecosystems. So good, good work there. Thank you. Let's take that a little bit further still into the next exercise. And here you've got to categorize. It's going to be a 60 second exercise again. And there are eight phrases here, some of them represent advantages of globalization and some disadvantages. See if you can sort out and type in please to the chat, the ones that you think are advantages and the numbers of those you think are disadvantages, starting now. Great, well done. There were a, a flood of answers started to come through here with the advantages and the disadvantages listed. Well done. So the um, first person through here again, and again, I hope I'm saying the names correctly, with Chitor and, and Diep, and both came through with advantages very quickly. And then we've got some follow-ups with disadvantages. And it looks to me as if you're all putting them incorrectly. Can we have a look at the sorted out correct answers, please, Jim? Here they go. Okay, so indeed, those advantages of globalization were three, five, six, and seven. So we're looking at uh, advantages from the freer movement of labor, um, helping some of the poorest countries to achieve higher growth. So speeding up their development, potentially, uh, increasing the opportunities for developing countries to borrow money. And again, that can lead to their greater development, uh, in investment in infrastructure or in the HDI factors of education or health. And um, we can think about dynamic, dynamic efficiency gains flowing from the sharing of ideas and the skills and technologies that come from that te technology transfer that uh, was referred to earlier on the chat. And then, of course, you balance up with the disadvantages. So you can get trade imbalances, which may be a big issue for some countries. There is a risk that global multinationals exploit uh, workers or exploit economies in some of the places that they outsource to. Uh, it can cause higher structural unemployment in some countries, you know, in, in countries where jobs are moving away into cheaper locations. And finally, you might get dominant global brands, and that might be to the disadvantage of local brands. Okay, so you could possibly form the basis of a really good essay plan about uh, to evaluate the benefits of globalization, or perhaps you take the title, to what extent is it true that globalization is always beneficial? Uh, you could think about how you could use those suggestions there on that categorize exercise to build up into a full essay. So finally, I'm going to hand you back to Lisa for the last few exercises here. Thank you, Penny. Again, we're thinking about matching up 
um, the flags, I hope you're good at your geography, with the company names. Uh, it's really useful to have some examples of real companies. These are all multinationals uh, in order to inform your work. So hopefully you're good at geography and good at economics and you can put in the chat matching the flag to the company. So which country and flag do these companies belong to? So a little bit trickier because we are getting you to multitask by knowing your geography and your economics. So what do we think? Which country is the home of Mercedes-Benz? Uh, have a guess. Um, if you don't know the flag, you can put the country. Um, give you a little bit of time to think this through. Let's see who's got some good geography knowledge going on. Oh yeah, I see already um, someone's come through with linking up Tatar, which is a steel company, to um, India. That's a good start. Uh, the Mercedes-Benz, we look like we've got Germany coming through as an option. What about Zara? Where is Zara based? I'm sure a lot of us have um, done a bit of visiting to Zara since the shops opened. Which country is Zara from? Oh, we've got Nestle, Switzerland here. So we've got some good answers coming through. Let's have a look then, um, Jim, at matching the company to the country. That's absolutely tremendous. And I have to own up here in that I had to go and look up some of these flags. It's been a very long time since I learned the flags of the world. But you can see here, we've got a really big range of companies. Zara is, of course, based in Spain. Um, most of their clothing is manufactured there, but they also manufacture in Portugal and Turkey. Mercedes, of course, is a German company. Germany famous for producing uh, very high-tech, high-quality stuff. Uh, Mercedes and BMW, to mention just two. Nokia, mobile phone is based in uh, Finland. Samsung is a South Korean company. Lots of big brands come from South Korea. Uh, they are the biggest builder of container ships. They are also our Lucky Gold Star, which is better known to you as possibly LG, is uh, a company from South Korea. Shell, well here, Shell is uh, Dutch or Anglo-Dutch in actual fact. Red Bull, that drink that we all have to uh, imbibe when we're revising to keep us going. Uh, that has wings and it's from Austria. And of course, Nestle is from Switzerland. So really useful to have some examples whereby you can uh, drop into your work so that you look like you are really up to speed with everything that's going on globally. Very well done, everybody. Penny. Yes, Lisa. Over to you, and I think we've we're at um, now listing these countries. You've got to work out, uh, and Penny, I'm going to get you to join in this time. So we're going okay. to have a team effort. Of, right, uh, going for it. What do we think? So here we go. We've can got. I, can I join in as well, Lisa? Can I have a go? You can, yes, I think we'll all have a go at this. I tell you, we'll, play, we'll, we'll play against the students. Right, we're going to take you on, students. Oh, be tricky. Okay. So uh, you know, no pressure. So. <laughs> According to the KOF Glo Globalization Index, is the next country's position in the index chart higher or ah. lower? Okay, so in terms of mm. openness to globalization, Canada comes in at 15. So what do we think mm. in terms of globalization? Do we think the USA is going to be higher or is the USA going to be lower. Now, I'm going to put Jim on the spot, oh. and I'm going to say, Jim, what do you reckon? Well, um, of course, Donald Trump said America first, didn't he? And so he did. and int introduced a lot of protectionism. So I, I think Canada's quite an open country, so I think USA will be uh, will be lower in the uh, in the list, therefore you know, a higher number than 15, if you know what I mean. Less okay, globalised. So, and you know what? I think, Penny, are you in agreement? Yes, I am. Absolutely. I suspect it's changed in the last few years. I think we should. So it looks like the students are think? all thinking that um, higher. A surely, higher number. Yeah. Yeah. A higher, higher number. number. Yeah. OK, so let's have a look. 
Ah, uh, oh, it's sort of, okay. It's oh. lower in terms of globalization, but a higher number. Ah, okay, so it's lower in the league okay. table, isn't it? Yeah, got it. Okay. So the um, yeah. it's lower in the league table. So we we perhaps better make sure we're getting that the right way around, one and all. So the <laughs> the lower the lower the uh, the lower the number, the yeah. more more globalized you are. Got so it. this is actually a top tip when yeah. you are looking at data. Double check you understand what the direction of travel is. Okay. So here. The bigger the number, the less globalized you are. So let's have a look at France this time then. What do we think? Is France going to be more globalized than the USA or less? What do we reckon? Penny's turn to go first, I think. (laughs) Thanks, Jim. (laughs) Um, I suspect this one's going to be higher in the index chart. Um, I wonder if the, the, the way in which their position as a member of the EU has an impact on that. Uh, yeah, so I, I, I'm going to go lower. Uh, sorry, higher this time. Okay, let's have a look. Jim, lower number. Oh, definitely higher. Part of the EU, isn't it? It's got to be. Got to be higher. Yeah. yeah. Score on the door. Yeah. Yeah. Ah. More globalized. Absolutely. We oui, we oui, Sybil. So more globalized uh, than the USA because it's part of that enormous <laughs> customs union that is the EU. Four hundred and thirty million consumers in there uh the numbers fallen since the uk left but nonetheless huge what about south korea then we've Mm. seen south korea come up as a country with lots of big multinational corporations is that going to be more globalized than france or less what do we reckon Hmm. that's a tricky one isn't it quite a few people are coming in so far they reckon it's lower yeah. And I'm assuming they mean the number. Yeah, Deep's gone for low, hasn't uh, Deep's yeah, been yeah. very strong, th- and Ashe as well. Ashe, very yeah. Very strong I've, I've, today yeah. in the session. I'm, uh, I might well follow the students this time. Chris yeah, I well. think so. I'm, uh, I'm thinking that might be the thing to do. So, Jim, yeah. let's have a look. Are yeah. our students Defin- right? Definitely lower. Yeah, they were right. Very good indeed. Okay, and well fine, finally. Ooh. Oh, golly. Oh. Ooh, that's a tricky one. Might that's need some help. One, isn't Might it? need some help from the students here. Yeah, yeah. what do you reckon? I can't see many container ships going to Iceland. I think <laughs> Iceland. Um, it doesn't. It's not. It's not a country that trips off the tongue when you think about the concept of globalization. Uh, you know, openness, uh, multinationals, container. I think it's going to be lower than even even USA or South Korea, I'd say. Yeah, I, I'm inclined to agree with you. And it looks like our students are very much on the same page as yeah. well. We've got some very yeah. confident responses there. What do you think, Penny? I was, I, was going to, I was going to go higher just for the sake of saying something different, but uh, I'm not sure. I'm not convinced. OK, let's have a look, Jim. Oh, well yeah. done. Absolutely. Well done. So we were all pretty confident about that one, but... Quite interesting to see that um, USA, which is obviously flagged up as being, you know, a very open economy, although perhaps the Trump era has damaged that, uh, being uh, so low down on the rankings. So useful data to have if you're yeah. writing about comparative material. Super Great stuff. stuff. Fantastic stuff. Great session. I'm bang on time as well. Well done Even to better. Penny and Lisa. It's pretty unusual if you've been to any of the previous 25 economic sessions for one of these sessions to, to finish spot on the time there. <laughs> but that's because we've got the A team in today who, uh, who, uh, but lots of content. We covered a lot of ground, didn't we? Lots of ground. That's, that's, the, that's the efficiency of a female team, Jim. <laughs> I'll make a note of that, Lisa, for next time. <laughs> Really good. But some fantastic answers in the live chat window. We've got lots of people still with us. So yeah, brilliant. Many, many thanks to everybody who's um, who's been brave enough to type their responses into the live session chat. Obviously, if you watch on replay, then you don't get a chance to do that. But uh, I'm sure, hopefully your answers were as strong as the, as the students today. Anyway, the deal on YouTube is if you found the session useful, uh, please give us a thumbs up so that Penny and Lisa will make it, I think it's worth their while putting this fantastic session together. But also it helps YouTube uh, suggest this session to other A-level economists who are maybe preparing for some assessments over the coming days and weeks. So that's much appreciated. Uh, We are back again next week. We've got two sessions per week over the next two or three weeks. Uh, So if you go to tutoru.net forward slash live, 
and um, look at the upcoming live sessions for economics. Uh, they will be posted very shortly if they're not already there. And of course, you can go back and catch up on replay all the previous 25 sessions and download the PowerPoints if you wish. Useful resource to have a look through. Um, help yourself. Just log in and download them for free. Uh, have I missed anything else out? Penny, Lisa, is that any, any other messages? I think you've got it all covered, but best of luck, absolutely. everyone. Yes, absolutely. We we'll look forward to seeing you next time. Too right. Hope the revision is going well. We'll see you soon uh, on the next uh, live revision blast. So from the three of us, see you later. Thank you. Bye. Bye.